I made a video a couple of weeks ago where I talked about ServiceMate and how job costs can be calculated and stored. Uh, I had some really good feedback about that one and one of the questions that came up was, so how does this work with partial invoices? So I thought I'll make this little video to kind of go over that, uh, talk about the pitfalls and how it all fits together. So I'm not going to go again through exactly how the costs and all that stuff is set up. I'll put a link uh, below this video to that previous video. Um, so uh, if you feel lost when I start looking at this, go back to that video and look, watch that one first and then uh, come back here. Okay, so in this one, we're going to be using the add-on called partial invoice. If you go and search for partial invoices, it's this little percentage sign one, uh, and just make sure it's turned on. I believe this is a free one. Now, the problem that happens is let's create a new job, and I'll, I'm just going to start from scratch, and we'll see... Um, how this uh, all fits together. So I'm gonna have some quoting and like last time I'm going to add a, a package, a service package and I'm going to say this thing usually the price is, let's make some nice round numbers, 500 and the cost is 200. Okay, so I'm just gonna have that one item on there and I'm gonna go save this and then when I look at my history here, if I open up this job, actually I'll put it into a work order, not that it really matters. Um, then in the invoicing now, there's a little drop down here where you can create a partial invoice. And you use this if you sometimes want someone to pay a deposit, right? Or if uh, out during the quote, um, yep, you get someone to pay a little bit beforehand or if you have progress payments over time. Um, so just before I create that, let's just double check our costs here. So our estimated profit was the 500 minus the 200, right? I'm actually going to just quickly add a time as well. I'm going to say that um, Bill was here for, um, let's say, uh, for at $25 an hour for two hours. Come on. There we go. Okay, so that's going to be, oh, where's the right? I can't remember what his rate was, but we'll find out in a second. So two hours and the labor would have been, it was 50 bucks an hour. So that's minus 100 and the materials was 300. So it leaves a total of 500 on the job. Okay. So just to make sure everything is saved, I'll open it back up. Okay. Now let's say we create a new partial invoice. So here you now select uh, which things you want the person to pay for. Now, uh, if there were five different things, sometimes people have a line item called deposit or something uh, that's separate. Um, but you can select here which one you want and you can say, I want them to pay half of this beforehand. Okay, so you can see the original job and then the new partial invoice is going to be for 250 bucks. So let's go for it. Okay, so there's that uh, invoice. That's the partial invoice that they can then pay. And so now it has gone and created a second line item. So the way ServiceMate does this is it creates a second job. If I reload this, there's now a 33A on top of my 33. 
So if we're going to 33A, it's that half the price, the 250 is in here. And in the original job, there's now a negative 250 along with that. So the remaining is 250. So if you add the two up, right, if you say 250 plus 250, it's 500, it still kind of works. Uh, this job is marked as completed. Um, so let's look at what happens with the profit calculations though. So this is now where uh, it upsets a lot of people. Um, so Bill is still against this job as two hours. So the labor of 100. Uh, the materials cost, um, you know, the materials revenue is now only 250, it's only half. Um, and so the total profit now is only showing as 150 for this job. And on the other one, it shows that there's a profit of 50 on that job because there was a, you know, 250 and the cost was 200 on um, this, um, on the materials on this one. So you do end up with the same total, but it's now kind of all over the place, right? So because, you know, now there's all the costs of this material was put on 33A and none of it was put over here and all the labor costs stays over here uh, and none of it's in the other one. So it's very hard. You can't go in and one spot and see what the profit of your job was. Uh, luckily, we have Wink reports. So I'm just gonna make sure that we've uh, refreshed everything and then I'm gonna create a uh, report. So the labor is pretty much gonna stay the same because the labor is on the main job. Um, make sure that all your labor is always on the same job, on the original job. Do not put them <laughs> on the partial invoice um, jobs. You should almost not even think of these as jobs and just as this is an invoice. Even if the person who went out to do the quote Put them on the main job, you know. Um, put everything on the main job if you can, because otherwise the reporting becomes a lot more difficult. Because these things will have different dates, you know. If you th th these things, the completed date is going to be today for this one, but this might only be completed, you know, in two months. So if you're going to try and reconcile appointments that are linked to different jobs that are different dates, it's it becomes a nightmare. So I would say one rule is just to keep all your appointments and times and labor on the original job. Okay, back in here, the material costs is kind of where we um, need to change things. So just a reminder of what this report looked like. It was just, uh, we had all the invoice line items and we summed it up uh, to get the total. So, and this one was just for job 32 at the time. But if we create a new one, let's create a new one for ourselves. And we say um, material costs with partial invoices. And I'm gonna put this into video tutorial. And this is going to be the invoice lines again from ServiceMate. So here you can see the um, you know the jobs from the <laughs> the video I made uh, last week, and here we can see the line items that have just come through from um, you know the job we just created. And so you can see we've got a negative for the partial invoice, and you know we've got a package for five hundred, and this one for 250 in the partial invoice job. Now, I mean, if we sum everything up, right, then, you know, these two cancel out and you're kind of left with that. So, but what, but what it can mess you up is the dates, you know, if you're trying to get a s aggregation, the job numbers are different. Um, but there's an interesting thing, the item number, 
that they put on it is always called partial invoice. So I'm going to be using this to, um, you know, I think to revert it back to just the original job because that's what we care about. We want to take out all these lines and we also want to take out all these lines so that we only end up with the original one there. So let's take take out these partial invoice ones. That's the easy one, right? So we can just say in our filters where the item number is not partial invoice. And that's it. It's been taken out. But, you know, we still can't, um, you know, we can't add these two together because that'll be 750 bucks, which is, uh, it'll be double counting this extra payment. So what do we do? We have to take out all these, um, the partial invoice jobs, not the partial invoice line items. So the next filter is, uh, there's a few ways to do this. The simplest to understand is probably to just say where the, um, if I say ends with, um, Uh, what's the name? The um, job number. And I can say if it ends with any of A, B, C, D, E. So it depends how many partial invoices you add, right? I've never seen anyone use more than like up to a D <laughs> uh, in the field. Um, we can do a regular expression as well to make it a bit um, more robust. Um, but generally, this is easy to understand and it works really well. So at the moment, it still says, show me only the ones that ends with it. So I'm saying that, but so I want the opposite of that. So I say, not, not that. And there we go. So now we have only the line item for the original service package. So, you know, if we add the uh, cost in again, we'll see that that was to 200. We can work out the profit, you know, we can say that minus that. And so all of that will stay. So, you know, that will give us back what the original um, profit margin was. And if I go back to my reports, uh, as I said, as long as you don't put labor on the partial invoice job, just keep them on the original jobs, then this labor costs will stay exactly the same and those will be calculated. Um, this was a while back. And so that was like from last week. And so then this merged, the, the final merged report to work out the job profit, as long as you, you then use this new data source here, instead of this one we did in the last video, um, your profit will be worked out correctly. So that's the whole trick. Make sure to take out the line items that are partial invoices and take out all the jobs that are partial invoices. Uh, that's it. If you have any questions uh, or anything, just let us know um, and talk to you next time. Bye-bye.